Do I label this shoe the best daily trainer of 2023 so far? Is it still holding up to that claim? Let's dive in and find out. What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Steam Runner here. Welcome back to another video. And today we're looking at the Brooks Hyperion Max after 100 miles. So it's no surprise that I've been absolutely loving this shoe since it's come into my rotation. And I could have made this video last week. We've rocketed over the 100 mile mark. Just had other videos in the schedule to get out first. But I'm excited to give you guys my thoughts on how fast this one got to 100 miles, helps that we're marathon training, how I've been using it, how the wear and tear is, and when I continue to use it moving forward. So if you're excited for today's video, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and let's dive in to the wear and tear. So in terms of the wear and tear on this shoe after 100 miles if that shoelace would lie down thank you very much it's holding up really really well no surprise there 100 miles really for a daily trainer or a trainer that should have a little bit of durability in it is really nothing at all the upper bar the fact that it's muddy because it has been out this morning on a medium long run is holding up really well no snags no tears no frays no nothing the midsole is barely broken in really to be honest with you it barely even looks like it's been used especially the exposed midsole that you can see on the bottom of the shoe which i'll show you shortly and the grip itself the grip is one of the best features about this shoe it really is something else i've been running in a multitude of conditions in this shoe wet dry trails roads it's held up on all of them really really well I think the one thing I learned with the Brooks Hyperion Tempo was despite how much of a simplistic shoe it was, it just holds up really, really well over time. And it was only the fact that the midsole went kind of flat after 350, 360 miles that I had to retire both the pairs. Um, but I never had an issue with any of the upper snagging in and around the heel counter, which you sometimes see little holes appear, or any frays on the upper. Everything was fine, everything looked great, and this is no different. This is built just the same, and it's holding up really, really well. So how have I been using this shoe to get it up to 118 miles where we are today? Well, we're marathon training, so it's had a lot of miles logged in it. And this for me has become my best uh, non-plated shoe that I have in my rotation that I'm basically gravitating uh, towards for pretty much every single run, uh, bar the easy runs. But having said that, I have done an easy run in it. Let's cover all of that first, uh, and then I'll tell you about the other shoes that I'm choosing for the easy days. Uh, but other than that, there's no other shoe that I want to reach for at the moment other than this thing. So I'm doing a workout I've gone for this thing uh, sort of a speedier workout I've been trying to rotate some other shoes in I wore the magic speeds last week for my workout but I kind of wish I'd worn these um, I'm kind of in that stage with this shoe where it's like I don't want to run in any other shoe other than this thing which is kind of what you want from a from a daily trainer you want to be able to run in it love it put it down and then gravitate towards it again the next day so I have done a easy run in it just the one and as I expected, I ran a bit too quick. Heart rate was really low, effort was really low. Everything felt really good, but it was quicker on the pace side, which is to be expected in this lightweight, incredible shoe. Um, so I'm just having to hold fire on using them for easy runs because I want to put some heavier shoes on just to kind of hold me back a little bit. I think sometimes when you're running something so lightweight, light and nimble and feels good, you have a tendency to pick up the pace. And what I've got to be careful of in training right now is I've got two areas of focus, which is the long run and the workout in the week, uh, and everything else just kind of like merges together to kind of prop up those two runs. I don't want to tire myself out on any of the other runs, so that's where I've got to be a little bit careful. Otherwise, if I wasn't marathon training, I probably would wear it for every single run. Moderate runs, medium long runs, anything with a steady state pace is this thing's bread and butter. Marathon pace is this thing's bread and butter. And half marathon pace and even up to 10K pace is this thing's bread and butter. It covers such a wide range. So the majority of the runs I've been doing have been the medium long runs, a long run or two long runs I think so far in the shoe. Um, and, and it will get another long run again this weekend. Uh, and uh, I've done one easy run and a couple of workouts already as well I think. So we have got there very, very quickly. Uh, and I've just been enjoying putting, the, realistically, the steady miles are my favourite in this shoe, the moderate runs. It's exactly what this thing is built for. So it's had a massive wide range. It can do it all. There's nothing really that it can't do. So will I continue to use this shoe moving forward? It's a bit of a stupid question. Of course I will. This thing will be going until I have to retire it. This isn't going to be shelved for any reason. This is going to go and go and go. It'll be at 200 miles 
pretty darn quickly. Uh, I think where I'm going to continue to use it really moving forwards is obviously during marathon training, but I think where this thing excels, and if you live in an area like me where you do have light trails on your doorstep, I find the grip on this shoe to be really, really good. So it is one of the better shoes for me to take out there on those light trails. I mean, when I say light trails, I'm talking just like fire track trails, it's trails a little bit of gravel and dust on it, nothing crazy, nothing technical at all, very, very runnable. Um, that the, this thing just eats those things for breakfast. It has no problems in going out there. The grip on the shoe is fantastic. So it's a great shoe that I can transition from tarmac to trail. I have a lot of loops around here that I do, especially at this time of year, when I get out in the morning and it's dark, but by the end of the run it's, it's light, so I can do some concrete and then head out on the trails halfway through. Uh, that transition with this shoe is absolutely fine. So again, it's just gonna continue to do its thing. Once we've got marathon training over, I still expect to be able to log some miles in it. And then I'll be able to take this thing out there and rip up the trails with some fartlek workouts, doing some strength work, obviously a lot of base building after Newport Marathon. But I'll, when I get to the point where I want to put some workouts in it, this thing will be great as I said for ripping up the trails doing some fartlet work out there that will be this thing's bread and butter I did it with a tempo uh, and I'll be doing it again with this so yet yeah, more of the marathon pace stuff more of the moderate miles probably some easier miles as well maybe here and there uh, some faster workouts as I said long runs and moderates bread and butter and then once the marathon training's done it will become a bit of a workout shoe for when we get out there on the trails. So after 100 miles, has my thoughts changed on who this shoe is best for? The answer is no. I still think it's best for anyone that likes uh, a running shoe that doesn't have a plate in it and is slightly on the firmer side. I mean, when you first run in the shoe, the first two or three runs, it does feel on that spectrum of uh, really firm this end and really hard this end. It is much closer up to the firmer end, but as it breaks in, it is starting to creep back down towards the middle. I wouldn't say it's near the middle yet. It is definitely on the firmer side, but what this shoe is, is light, responsive. You pop and you go when you're running in this shoe. Yes, it's firmer, but I like that. I feel like I can get a quicker turnover. Uh, my cadence goes up and it's just a more enjoyable ride. I often find the softer shoes get a bit mushy, especially like the Speed 3s. I've said that a few times now. The longer I run in them, the kind of the more mushy they get and the more energy I have to put in uh, to kind of keep up the same pace with this thing. It just doesn't, it just stays as it is. It's just such a good, good shoe. So in terms of if you're looking for a daily trainer that can do it all, can cover everything, easy, moderate, marathon pace, half marathon pace, 10K pace. I've done some strides in this thing. It really does turn over nicely. It covers all bases. Yep, it's strong point is probably more down towards the moderate to half marathon pace and in that area, but easy pace it can handle and the top 10K workouts it can do as well. It can do everything. So if you like that, and you like a firmer ride, and you want something to do it all, look no further. And I just throw in some good partnerships for this shoe, because I mentioned earlier that they're my easy run shoes I'm trying to use a little bit more to stop myself from using these. At the moment, I'm using the 361 Centauri. I'm also using the Endorphin Shift 3. Uh, and right now, I'm also using the Puma Forever Run Nitro that's just been sent to me. So those three are soaking up a lot of the easy miles at the moment, and I'm just enjoying those. They're heavier shoes, more cushions, softer, but or both on the, or all three them I should say on the softer side of the midsoles compared to this thing so those three really in general pair nicely any one of those three pair nicely with this shoe but in terms of if you want another sort of speedier lightweight shoe the speed three is a good companion to this shoe um, I think they do both cover the same bases but I think with both the shoes you've got two different options there doing the same thing some of you might that find that like, well, why do I need that? Well, sometimes you might fancy a softer ride and sometimes you might fancy a firmer ride, depending on the day, depending on what your feet and legs want. Uh, but if you're still covering the same sort of training, you've just got a couple of options there. And in terms of a lot of you have asked about racing in this shoe, yep, 100%, if you're looking for a non-plated shoe uh, to race in, this is would probably be my top option right now. Uh, I've got to be honest with you, especially for those longer distances, yeah, it might get a little bit firm towards the marathon distance, but anything sort of half marathon and below, I wouldn't hesitate but to pick this one up and race in it. The lightweight nature of the shoe and the way you can turn over so quickly and the way it moves you just lends itself to running fast, so it feels really, really good there. So that's it. 
those are my thoughts on the Brooks Hyperion Max after 118 miles. We're getting to 200 and I'm sure we'll rock it up to 300 and above, but I'd love to hear from you guys. How many miles have you got in your Hyperion Max? Because I know you guys were showing the shoe a lot of love in my previous couple of videos saying how much you loved it. Some of you obviously didn't get on with it. It's to each their own and it's not going to work for everyone just like every running shoe, but so many of you did love it. I'd love to hear how you're getting on with them. Have you hit a good amount of mileage yet? And what are your thoughts? How long did it take to break in for you? Have you loved them from the start or did they take a little bit of while to warm to you? So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do consider giving it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Until then.